This video is going to be an overview of the steps I took to make the animation you saw in the intro. I started learning Houdini not too long ago and I think it's a very powerful piece of software that's worth the time investment. I started by importing the, this hourglass I made in Blender as, a, as an FBX so I exported it from Blender as an FBX and then I imported it here. I used a transform to scale it down with a uniform scale of 0.01. Uh, the reason I made it in Blender is that it's just faster for me because I'm not, I'm still not yet very comfortable with the modeling tools inside of Houdini. And then uh, here I used um, I used this tool from uh, Labs called Labs Thicken. Uh, if I disable it, you can see. Hold on, I'm gonna put the flag here. You can see that it just adds thickness. It's just like the solidify modifier in Blender. Um, I just noticed that uh, my simulation was more stable when I did this, that's why I added it. And then here I have two spheres. Uh, the first one is the one I'm going to use as the, the uh, simulation object. And then this is this is the one where I scattered the points. So this one has a different shape because I wanted uh, the balls to be scattered this way. I scaled it along the... Uh, yeah, I, I scaled it along the Y axis. I... Uh, Increasing the radius here, and then for the scatter, I only put a 42 points, so not a lot. And then with the, this attribute adjust float, I adjusted the, the p scale so that it goes from 0 0.65 to 2.05 to have some variations uh, on the on the balls. And then for the copy to points, it's classic instance in. Um, and then here I use I used a um, these two are from Vellum Configure Balloon. So the Vellum Cloth and the Vellum Pressure. Let me show you my uh, parameters. It's probably not going to be the same for you if you try to recreate this, so you're going to have to play with the values. Uh, so in my stretch stiffness, 6, 100, so 600, and then for bend, it's 1, and then this value here. For the pressure, I have a stiffness set at 6, I think it was the default one, and then uh, uh, plus 10 for the yeah for the multiplier and then I also output this group uh, I called it be stretch which which we're going to use inside inside of the dot net so that we inflate uh, the balloons once inside uh, the hourglass and then yeah I plug everything in the inside the vellum solver um, if I check the sub steps I set it to 3 and then constraint iteration is to 10 um, as I said these all these values are not like you, you, you'd have to play with uh, with your simulation. It really depends. You need to change them uh, to suit what you want. Um, let me check. And then the force here, I disabled the gravity. I also did it. I can, yeah, you could show the the, ge the collision geometry, but I disabled it because I wanted to see uh, the deformation inside to check whether my um, my my balloons are like have some shading issues or anything. I switch to. I will disable the wireframe. And then this is what I get. Uh, yeah, I cached it, of course. Now I will put the flag on the cache so that you don't have to wait. Uh, this is what comes out of the vellum silver. Okay, so after that I used a, a post process, a vellum post process with a subdivision set to 1. And then a little bit of spatial blur just to make it smoother. And then I also cached it afterwards. So this is what we get after the vellum post process. As you can see, it definitely looks smoother. We, uh, if we go to the same, yeah, we're already on the same uh, frame. You can see it's the the edges are definitely smoother. Although we can notice this, uh, it's a bit jagged on the the faces, but you can fix that by just dropping a a normal uh, node. Now these four delete nodes, so I baked my simulation then I noticed that I didn't want these ones that uh, Hold on, I will go back here. You can see that some um, some balloons are getting out of the, the the hourglass, so I didn't want that. Instead of, of removing these points from the scatter, uh, because I already cached my simulation, I just dropped some delete nodes, and then I, I deleted them by hand. So if you can see it, like there is a pattern, when you when you click on a delete node and then press and enter, you can select certain objects. So I just deleted some of these. 
you can see. And then here finally, before I export to Blender, I uh, removed all the attributes and groups. I only left uh, B because uh, it will make the uh, the Alembic file at the output a lot smaller in size. And then I exported it. Nothing special in the... Uh, yeah, using the ROP Alembic node. And then make sure the valid frame range is set to render frame ledge because by default it's usually a rendered current frame. And to have the inflation of the balloons, so you need to dive inside the vellum solver. I have it here in a separate window because this way I can tweak, for instance, my my forces or anything without having to uh, go uh, go inside the vellum solver and then go back. This way, it's, I, I like it better this way. So I added a pop wind, uh, wind velocity set to 0 0.7, and then a little bit of, of noise in the wind. Uh, as you can see, the amplitude is quite low. And then for the for the inflation, I used a vellum constraint property. So you remember we checked um, here in the pressure, we checked this uh, this output group P stretch. So we're going we're going to select it here in our groups P stretch, and then check rest length scale. And then I keyframed this this uh, this parameter here. So I will disable my solver so that it doesn't take a lot of time. Here it's set to one, and then at frame, at f yeah. It's set to 1. After frame 47, it starts moving. And then the final value is uh, around 16 or se yeah, 17. And then I think I, it was... Um, if I try to open... Um, yeah, I think I, I set it to... Yeah, Bezier. I left it at Bezier. I thought it was linear or constant. But yeah, I didn't want the inflation to be uh, abrupt, so I set it to Bezier. That's why it's... Uh, that, that way it's a little smoother. And then, uh, yeah, and then you plug it in the force. That's it for the Houdini side. Now back to familiar territory. Uh, I then imported the Alembic into Blender. I don't think I added any modifiers. Yeah, um, by default it, it adds this modifier mesh sequence cache. So it also imports the velocity attribute by default, uh, which is handy when you want to have motion blur which in my case I added, so I just checked the motion blur and I reduced the shutter a little bit because it was uh, too high. For the lighting, it's it's very simple. I added a backdrop and then I have a rim light. I have a rim light here. So you can see if I zoom in, you can see the edge here of the balloons. I have a rim light. That's what the rim light is doing. And then a backlight to create this sort of a gradient in the backdrop in the backdrop and of course uh, an HDRI my favorite studio small 0 tree uh, I set the strength to a very low value 0 0.3 here because I want uh, because I wanted the light coming from the balloons to to have a higher value so the way I achieved this is is actually I wanted something fast so I used an, an add-on a ducky 3ds add-on it's called real-time materials I think I used this one light one here um, the only thing I changed is, uh, ta -ta -ta, if we go to the material, yeah, we don't need this. Um, so yeah, as you can see, this, this parameter here, blend, it allows you to uh, switch between the one with, uh, with the light and the one with no light. Uh, however, what I did was, I dove inside, and this, uh, this parameter here, as you can, yeah, you can probably tell, but I keyframed the blend that blend uh, value, I keyframed it so that um, so that um, it switches from from having no lights to having the light, of course. And then here for the strength, I think it's set um, by default. It's always set to eight point three. So even if you're, if I go back, even if you're at blend one, you can see that uh, you can see the, these little dots here, which I didn't like. So I also keyframed that. So once inside it. If See, I'll, sh I'll switch to the beginning. I keyframed it to zero, and then once I started uh, illuminating my frame, yeah, at around here. Once I, once I start, I started adding light to these. Once I started keyframing the blend value, I also set this one to its default value, which is uh, eight point three. So I set a and I bring up my timeline here. Between these two values, I set it up to be uh, um, 
constant here because as you can see it's zero until it's 8.3 whereas for the blend parameter itself it's set to uh, yeah between these two values here it's busier I think older in the year doesn't matter but that's how I did uh, that's the only uh, change I did but uh, other than that I kept uh, I think I set the strength to zero because I didn't want to have any uh, yeah I think it adds these uh, this grungy look but I think it's not it doesn't go well with the type of material I was going for so I set the strength to zero this is classic I set the resolution to uh, this 50% uh, and then I upped my max samples to 256 that's it for this uh, overview it was a bit different from what I usually do I hope you learned something have a great day